10 here with you and this is electromagnetism lesson 10 our exercise tutorials so how these little tutorial videos work is very simple step one the exercise question is asked then you pause the video and have a go at the question step two continue to play the video I'll give you a hint provide you a little bit of assistance if you need it to point you in the right direction then continue to play the video I'll provide the answer with a worked explanation of how we got to the answer and then step four continue the video to the next question so on and so forth so here's the first one question one as the load is increased on a DC series motor its speed will do what as the load is increased on a DC series motor its speed will a increase b unchanged decrease c fluctuate change all over the shop pause here here's your hint what are the load and no load speed characteristics of a series motor if you've watched our previous video you should be able to visualize the curve for a series motor Here's the answer. A series motor's load to speed ratio is pretty poor. It's going to decrease and it's going to continue to decrease as the load increases. Question two. The torque on a DC shunt motor for a given value of field flux will do what? A. Is inversely proportional to the armature current. B. Varies with the square of the current. C is directly proportional to the armature current. D is unchanged. So again, pause here. Here's your hint. How is torque produced between the two fields? Think about how the two fields interact to produce torque. So the answer is C, they are directly proportional to the armature current. So the more armature current you have, the stronger it will push around, the more torque. Less armature current, less torque. So they are directly proportional. Question three, a series DC motor on no load will do what? Operate at a fixed speed, run, but at a lower than normal speed, C won't start at all or D will run at an extremely high speed so pause here here's your hint what is the special speed characteristic of a series motor again visualize the curve of the speed characteristic of a series motor The answer is D, a series motor will run at an extremely high speed. And I mean hundreds of thousands of RPMs if it's allowed to have no load. Question four, which motor is best suited to a relatively constant speed operating on an intermittent heavy load? So which motor would be best for maintaining a nice fixed speed but the load itself is changing? So a shunt motor, A, B, a compound motor, C, a series motor, D, a differential motor, A, B or C. Pause here. Here's your hint. What is the special speed characteristic of each motor type? Again, in the previous presentation, we actually displayed all the speed characteristics for each of the motor types. So the answer is a compound motor. It kind of gives you the best of both worlds. It's going to give you good torque, good constant speed, and will cope with loads that fluctuate or intermittent. 
Question five, the hysteresis loss in the armature of a DC generator is due to what? And now it can be in a generator or it can be in a motor. It doesn't really matter. Hysteresis loss is hysteresis loss. A, continual reversing of the flux in the armature. B, the load current in the armature. C, current in the field winding alternating. D, induced EMF in the armature core. So pause here. Hint, hysteresis is only an AC issue when things are changing backwards and forwards. So we're in a DC machine, are things changing backwards and forwards? So the answer is the continual reversing of the flux in the armature. Remember the commutator is switching the current and reversing it the other way. So it comes out the same way at the terminals, but it's reversing in the armature. So continual reversing of the flux in the armature, effectively creating kind of a pulsating AC, and it creates hysteresis losses. Question six, eddy currents in a DC machine are caused by what? A, reduction of the flux in the fields. B, spurious magnetic fields. C, heating of the armature laminations. Or D, wrong reading in the ammeters. So pause here. What type of losses are caused by eddy currents. So think about eddy currents. What are they? Where are they found? The answer is heating of the armature laminations. Because we're getting these fluctuations or the current constantly reversing backwards and forwards in the armature, we're inducing extra fields into the steel, creating these eddy currents. That's why we laminate them to reduce the distance that they can connect together, therefore reducing the heat. So heating of the armature laminations is the correct answer. Seven, the total copper losses in a DC machine are the sum of what? A, armature and field voltage drops. B, the armature power losses. C, the friction and windage losses, or D, the armature and field winding power losses. So pause here. So what defines a loss? Think about what is what creates a loss. In this particular case, what are the losses in the copper? So the armature and field winding power. Remember, anything where there's a copper wire which has got internal resistance that's where you're going to get copper losses so the armature winding and the field winding losses question eight the efficiency of a DC machine is the ratio of what a the generated EMF to the terminal volts difference B the output to the input power C, the no load speed to the full load speed, or D, the input power to the output power. So the efficiency of a DC machine is found of the ratio. Which ratio are we looking for? Remember, when we're talking about efficiency, it's all about power. So it's a matter of just getting the ratio the right way around. It's the ratio of the output power to the input power. So be careful you didn't choose B, which was input power to output power. It's the other way around. It's output power compared to input power. Got to get the ratio the right way around. Question nine. Determine the back EMF generated by a six pole series motor with an armature circuit resistance of 0 0.5 ohms. The terminal voltage is 500 volts and the load current is 50 amps. So pause here. And as I say, 
always draw the circuit and then work out what you need to do with Ohm's law. So if you didn't know the formula you needed to use, here's your hint. EG equals VT minus IA minus RA. So here's our answer. Our base formula. Volts at the terminals. Let's volt T. Subtract the current and multiply by the resistance because that's going to give you the volts armature. So our 500 volts minus 50 times 0.5 gives us 500 minus 25 giving us a total of our internal volts across our armature at 475 volts. being the EG, the back EMF. So we've got 25 volts developed across the armature, 500 volts at the terminal, so the back EMF has to be the subtraction of the two. 10. Determine the efficiency of a 330 volt DC motor with a full load output of 11.2 kilowatts if the total losses are 2.2 kilowatts. So pause here. Here's your hint. Remember, efficiency percent equals output divided by input times 100. So the first thing we had to do was work out uh, what all the inputs and outputs were. So our efficiency equation is output divided by input times 100 on 1. The input is equal to our output plus our losses. So in this particular case, we had an output of 11. So 11 plus our 2.2 kilowatts of losses made our input. So simply 11.2 divided now by 13.4, multiplied by our 100 on 1, giving us an efficiency of 83.6%. So don't forget, sometimes it takes two steps to get to the answer. And we have to think a little bit ahead. So I hope you've enjoyed our Lesson 10 exercise tutorial on DC motors.